In this video, we're going to take a look at a hypothesis test where we are dealing with two different proportion, two samples where we are comparing the proportions. So proportion. Two samples. All right, so let's look at and read our example. Here we have a study found that a, among the 58,583, uh, 93 patients who had cardiac arrest during the day, 11,604 survived and were discharged. Among the 28,155 patients who had a cardiac arrest at night, 4,139 survived uh, and were discharged. We want to use a 0.1 significance, a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim. What is the claim? The claim is that the survival rates are the same. And so when we're talking about rates, we're talking about the proportion. And so we are, the claim is proportion 1 is the same as proportion 2. Now I should be a little bit careful. What is proportion 1 going to represent? So we first read about cardiac arrest during the day. So this would be our day cardiac arrest. And P2 is our night cardiac arrest. Uh, other values that we have here, we have this 58,593. That is the sample size for the day and with the actual number of successes being 11,604. For our second sample, we have 28,155. We have the number of successes is the 4,139. And then finally, we have alpha 0 0.01. So we're going to take these things and we're going to go to StatDesk. Uh, let's head over there. Oh, actually, before we do that, I didn't finish this up. So we identified the claim, the opposite of the claim. If the proportions are not equal, then they're not equal. And so our null hypothesis is P1 equals P2, and the alternative is P1 is not equal to P2. And so your alternative will always show up as either the claim or the counterclaim. Here for us, it is our counterclaim. It is the opposite of the claim. Uh, it's our alternative. All right, so now we can go over to StatDisk. So here in StatDisk, I'm going to choose Analysis. We are doing a hypothesis test. This hypothesis test is dealing with a proportion, but we have two different samples. We have the daytime sample and we have the nighttime sample. And so I choose the two samples, proportion two samples. First thing, our alternative hypothesis is that the proportion 1 is not equal to proportion 2. The significance level that we had was 0 0.01. Our sample size and number, number of successes for sample 1, let's go back here. So we had 58,593 as our sample size. Fifty-eight, five ninety-three. Number of successes there. 
we had 11,604. For sample two, we need to identify the sample size and number of successes. So sample two, we had 28,155 and 4139. So 28,155. And four one thirty nine. Let me just go back and double check. I have the right numbers. Four thousand one hundred thirty nine, twenty eight one fifty five, fifty eight five ninety three, and eleven six zero four. Perfect. All right. So we have those numbers, and now we can evaluate this. And we can make our decisions much in the same way we did before. We could compare the critical value um, and test statistics. So our test statistic here is 18.26094. That test statistic exceeds the critical value. And so we have evidence of the alternative. Our p-value, that's the method we'll use in this one. Our p-value is 0. .0000. And so the p-value is low, so the null must go. Our p-value, 0, 0.0000, which is less than the significance level of 0 0.01. So we reject the null. There is evidence that the rates are not the same. There is evidence of the alternative. This also said find the associated confidence interval. And because we are finding an associated confidence interval, uh, this was a two-tailed test, uh, so with this two-tailed test, our associated confidence interval is going to just be a 99% confidence interval. It's a 99% confidence interval. Because it was a two-tailed test and our initial significance level was 0 0.01, that's actually provided, uh, the specific confidence interval is provided here. So we have 0 0.044 up to 0 So 0 0.044 is less than P1 minus P2, is less, point, less than 0 0.058. Notice that this confidence interval does not contain zero. It's only positive values. And so we are 99% confident that the interval from 0 0.044 to 0 0.058 does, in fact, contain the true difference between the two proportions. Let's roll through the same exact example a second time. Not much will change here. And I want to do this in this video. I know we're getting long in this video. Um, let's do this a second time. So it's the same problem. The only thing that's different is now we are going to test the claim that the survival rate during the day is greater than the survival rate at night. So there your null hypothesis, um, let's say the claim, is that the proportion during the day is greater than the proportion at night. The opposite of the claim, the counterclaim, is the proportion of the day is actually less than or equal to at night. From these, we are able to identify a null hypothesis. It says the two proportions are equal. And the alternative that says 
they're not equal, specifically the second, the first is greater than the second. So all those other numbers from the example above, they stay the same. The only thing that's changing here is our alternative hypothesis. So over in StatDisk, I'm going to come back to this work here, and I am just going to change this alternative hypothesis to a population proportion 1 is greater than proportion 2 and evaluate. And a lot of things stay the same. In fact, the p-value stayed the same. Uh, so we make the same conclusion. So we reject the null. And the other thing that changes is instead of having a 99% confidence interval, now we're looking at a 98% confidence interval because this is going to be a one-tailed test. Now, over here in StatDisk, it did calculate the 98% confidence interval uh, instead. So 0.045 2.057. So those changed almost, incre I mean, almost imperceptibly imper small. Right. 0 0.058 went down to 0 0.057, 0 0.044 went up to 0 0.045 with the rounding. So they changed really slightly because we're dealing with a 98% confidence interval instead of a 99%. All right. uh, in the next video, we'll start talking about doing confidence intervals for two means. We'll see you then.